you. Few people realize the truth that witchcraft is in fact a religion, a valid federally recognized alternate religion with ancient roots that not only expressly forbids its followers from harming others, but does not even believe in Satan. We start our journey 25,000 years ago, at a time when humankind had a belief in animism. It was then thought that a god controlled the gusting wind, a god lived in the raging river, a god controlled the sky. But most importantly, so far as day-to-day -day existence was concerned, that there was a god of hunting and a goddess of fertility. Since most of the animals hunted were horned animals, so it was thought the god of hunting was a horned god. And since it was the woman who was visibly connected with birth, so it was logical that it be a goddess rather than a god of fertility. These two, the god of hunting and the goddess of fertility, were the two most important deities for early human existence. Along with these early steps of religion, we find the beginnings of magic. Magic of the sympathetic variety. In other words, the belief that like attracts like. In early England, the ritual leaders were known as the Wicca or Witter, an Anglo-Saxon term for the wise ones. In fact, by the time of the Anglo-Saxon kings in England, the king would never think of acting on any important matter without first consulting the Witten, the Council of Wise Ones. And these community leaders did have to be wise. They were not only the priests to the people, they were also the local doctors, the lawyers, magicians, and leaders in all things. With the coming of Christianity, there was not the immediate mass conversion that is sometimes suggested. The new religion came in fairly slowly. It was, in a sense, a man-made religion, and had not evolved slowly and gradually over thousands of years, as had the old religion. Up until about 1000 AD, England and most of Europe was still pretty much half and half Christian and pagan. Christianity came in at the top, as it were. The sovereigns and rulers were converted before ever the common people were. Cities and towns became at least nominally Christian before ever the smaller towns and villages did. The general populace was pagan then. The word pagan comes from the Latin pagani, meaning one who dwells in the country. Similarly, heathen simply means a dweller on the heath. This then was when the appellation of pagan or heathen came to be applied to non-Christians, originally with no connotations of evil or even anti-Christianity. To say that someone was a pagan was simply to say that they lived out of town, out in the country, and it was therefore to imply that they were non-Christian. But after trying for so long to convert the people to the new religion, saturation point was finally reached. No more seemed willing to give up the old gods for the new. So then, pressure started to be applied by the church. Old pagan practices were distorted to make them look un unsavory. Traditions were twisted. False accusations were made. The cauldron got into the picture about this time. It was purely a household cooking utensil, but a typical church charge against witches was that they used it for boiling up babies to obtain their fat. Along with these children were boiled all sorts of evil-sounding ingredients, such as snake's tongues, cat's eyes, rabbit's feet, wolf's claws, a negro's head, and flesh and blood. Of course, there were no babies boiled. One wonders where they would have all come from anyway, and why no one missed them. As for the awesome-sounding ingredients, they were simply herbs and plants. Today, all plants have a Latin name, known and used universally. But in the old days, they were only known by somewhat picturesque local ones, names often given according to the look of the plant. Tongue of a snake was adder's tongue, or the dog-tooth violet. Cat's eye was star scabious. Rabbit's foot was field clover. Wolf's claw, lysopodium. Negro head, vegetable ivory, and flesh and blood, tormentil. There were literally hundreds of these herbs with such colorful local names. Cow's tail, Jew's ear, devil's milk, uh, and similar ones. So things continued for many years, with Christianity trying gradually but surely to ease out the old religion. But the old religion was tenacious. Pope Gregory the Great made tremendous strides by ordering the destruction of ancient temples 
and the smashing of so-called idols. New churches were built on the old sites so that the church could cash in on the local populace's habit of going to them. Happily, most of the stonemasons and woodcarvers available for building the new churches were themselves pagans. So in the decorations, they incorporated figures of their own old gods. In this way, the people, although forced to attend the churches of the new religion, could still worship the gods of the old. But now the church had declared war on paganism. Anything non-Christian, no matter how morally and ethically good and, and worthwhile, was immediately labeled anti-Christian and therefore to be stamped out. The god of the old religion had horns, so apparently had the Christian devil, so the two were equated by the church. Now, if you put your finger here and you went straight down through the largest, thickest bone of the body is the butterfly bone of the brain, very thick. And you went straight through this way, you come to the penile gland, the little tiny P-shaped gland. This gland has light coming through it. For years, scientists says, oh, light can't reach that part of the brain because it's too dense, the bone is too dense. Well, we've been teaching that that's the third eye. We've been teaching for centuries that light comes through the penile, through that gland. They discovered it. My goodness, now they know that it actually happens. With light comes information and sound. Light travels 186,000 miles per second. And with it comes information and light. We can discern or bring in information from anywhere in the universe in seconds. Much of the civilization that we have created has been achieved uh, based on a direct denial of the psychedelic experience and all that it implies. Our humanness, our connection to the rest of nature, our connection into the feminine, uh, our place in nature. Because for the Western mind, we have no fixed place in nature. Our place is ours to define. We are, from the point of view of the cultural machinery that empowers us, completely free to become, to be, whatever we want to be. Now the problem with that prescription is that in Western culture what that means is permission to express ego, permission to profligately use and destroy resources, permission to set aside the political agendas of outclasses and outgroups, and uh, this untrammeled expression of will outside the context of nature has turned us into a kind of uh, Frankenstein's monster at best, a toxic force in the body of the Gaian world soul at worst. And I believe that our origin and our future culmination and our present happiness all can be secured, understood, illuminated and expanded only if we're willing to look at our relationship not only to altered states of consciousness but to uh, the mind behind nature because that's really what this is all about in a coven of feminists from which all men are excluded their leader is Hungarian born Z Budapest Z calls this Dianic witchcraft Dianic witchcraft, in one word, is women's mysteries. That means women get together as women and devote themselves to a magical pursuit and they take care of business, whatever the women in particular need. Women used to curse the enemies of peace and women. Women just used to have a blacklist, get out in front of the temple and tell the world that these people are bad, they should be curbed, they are warmongers and they are bad for babies and we did this until about the fourth century 
when it was stopped. And when women's mysteries were stopped, women's rights stopped, women's any kind of significance stopped. And that's when this whole silly idea came about that the Christians fed everybody that women have no souls. We have been brought up to experience ourselves as isolated centers of awareness and action placed in a world that is not us, that is foreign, alien, other, which we confront. Whereas, in fact, the way an ecologist describes human behavior is as an action, what you do is what the whole universe is doing at the place you call here and now. You are something the whole universe is doing in the same way that a wave is something that the whole ocean is doing. This is not what you might call a fatalistic or deterministic idea. You see, you might be a fatalist if you think that you are a sort of puppet which life pushes around. You are separate from life, but life dominates you. That's fatalism. But in the point of view I'm expressing, the real you is not a puppet which life pushes around. The real deep down you is the whole universe. And it's doing your living organism and all its behavior. It's expressing it as a singer sings a song. We've been hoodwinked into the feeling that we exist only inside our skins. That is a hallucination. We need to experience ourselves in such a way that we could say that our real body is not just what's inside the skin, but our whole total external environment. Because if we don't experience ourselves that way, we mistreat our environment. We treat it as an enemy. We try to beat it into submission. And if we do that, comes disaster. We exploit the world we live in. We don't treat it with love and gentleness and respect. We cut down millions of acres of forests to turn it into newspaper of all things. Lovely trees turned into information about nothing. And we don't replace them properly. We kick the world around in revenge the feeling that really we are puppets which the world kicks around. I'd like to discuss opening to inner guidance because I think that is the key that's required for the coming of the second Christ as has been foretold. This Christ consciousness is within every single being for the essence of God is what keeps us alive. That pure energy source as discussed by quantum physics. It is imperative at this time that we develop discernment the ability to discern what is right for us, to listen to our heart and to feel, to go with our intuitive guidance. What a lot of us are now doing or becoming aware of the necessity of doing is really learning to listen to the Christ within, to open up to the inner teacher, to open up to our inner guidance. And um, the way you do that is again simply aligning to the energy that sustains you through breath work, through light work, through conscious awareness and mind mastery. You know, there's an old joke that um, if you go far enough back, everyone's ancestors were pagans. And it's true. It really is true. And uh, so in some senses, you can see this movement as an attempt to go back and take out the juice, take the folk traditions, the dances, the songs. Nobody does that anymore. Basically, Christians as well as many other religions and even a lot of the occult groups are around uh, 
are afraid of us. We threaten them, uh, not physically, but our existence and our philosophy threatens their security because we pose questions that they don't want to face and that they don't have answers for. Not all witchcraft is dark spells and evil forces. More typical of modern Wicca is Selena Fox. In America's Midwest, she embraces people with white magic. A lot of people really confuse witchcraft or Wicca, um, pagan religions, with devil worship. They feel that it's evil, that we're harming people, um, that we're putting spells over people without you know, consulting them, and we're really not coming from that space at all. Most people who get to know us realize what we're doing is a very positive thing, that we're working with the energies of the earth, that we're very much tuned into a love consciousness, that we're seeking to do those kinds of things that religions all around the world have at their very essence, which is working with healing, working with love, working with achieving an inner balance and an inner communion with the divine. A few months ago, um, a national Catholic newspaper interviewed me. And the first thing I said to them was Jesus Christ was a witch. And then talked about how the path of Wicca and its love consciousness is real similar to what Christ was espousing. The golden rule we have is worded a bit differently and harm none, do what you will, but it's the same thing. You know, it's loving your neighbor as yourself. I think you do know witches without knowing that they're witches. Um, Are they nice people? They're just ordinary people. The first witch to make headlines in Australia was Rosaline Norton. She lived in Sydney's red light district of King's Cross, and during the 1950s, she spoke out strongly about witchcraft and magic. She publicly experimented with trance techniques and led an exotic and bohemian life as an artist. Her paintings were inspired by occult visions of ancient gods. But Rosaline's art was too bizarre for the times. It tapped a deep pagan pulse, and the public at large was outraged. Rosaline Norton died in 1979, her passing largely unmourned and unnoticed. The fact is that within Christianity and within Judaism, when you think, when you imagine in your mind, when you personify deity, for most people, it's male. And there's an old uh, famous, uh, it's not that old, but there's a famous saying by Mary Daly, if God is male, the male is God. And one reason that I think people are so attracted powerfully to magic and to the pagan religions is not only to worship, uh, let's say, mama in the sky instead of papa in the sky, they want to be God. I mean, I think the fundamental thing about the magical religions and about pagan religions is that ultimately, they say, within yourself, you are the God, you are the goddess, and therefore, what is so subversive in a very powerfully beautiful way about the pagan religions is that for women they say look you too are god mother of the winds of change queen of the transformers oh yeah come dance with us whirling woman i was very surprised when I got my first consultation and was told that I was going to be a priestess, it took me 12 years to get initiated because, you know, I always wanted to be a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> the reason that Christians are frightened of witchcraft is one, history is always written by the winners, and Christianity won and paganism lost. And two, 
people are afraid of the unknown and they're particularly afraid of the deepest parts of themselves they're afraid of their dreams they're afraid of their deepest desires and witchcraft and magic is uh, an art if you will or a science if you will that deals with trying to delve into the deepest places of our souls the places where the creative power is the places where the dreams are the places where all the things that we have to deal with if we want to become whole human adult deep human beings and most people are afraid of that clonical castle in ireland built in 1625 on a site where ancient druids used to gather since 1780 it's been the ancestral home of the durdin robertson family lawrence the 21st baron of strathlock became so deeply interested in the occult that in 1976, he and his sister, Lady Olivia, founded the Fellowship of Isis. The Fellowship of Isis is a multi-religious, multi-racial, multicultural society. That's why we have Catholic priests, nuns, Hindus, witches, spiritualists, walking around on a Sunday and drinking well water in our temple and lighting candles because we've no a uh, specific dogma that divides people. We find one point in common with all religions, the feminine, which we feel needs emphasizing now, really to save our planet from world destruction with our arms race and pollution. I think that uh, humanity is already enlightened. It just has to become aware of it. So the process is to unfold um, the inner spiritual truths, not to create them. Man is not born imperfect. Um, he has to realize his own divinity and in realizing his own divinity he will free himself. Можно только прожить жизнь и сделать какой-то свой вывод. Его нельзя передать другому. Мы часто говорим, нужно воспользоваться опытом наших отцов. Это было бы очень просто. К сожалению, мы должны прожить свой собственный жизненный опыт, иметь свой собственный жизненный опыт для того, чтобы иметь свое отношение к жизни. Когда мы его получаем, Жизнь кончается, к сожалению, и мы не можем им воспользоваться этим опытом. А молодые растут, не слушаются стояков и правильно делают, и ищут свой собственный опыт. Когда они его находят, жизнь их также кончается. В этом смысл жизни, в этом закон жизни. Вот об этом я тоже хотел сказать, что нельзя навязать свой опыт э, другому. Нельзя заставить человека испытывать чувства, внушенные, а можно лишь э, опираться на свой собственный жизненный опыт для того, чтобы быть, э, понять, что такое жизнь. These practices have nothing whatsoever to do with black magic or Satanism, and the way our system is structured, it could not even be misused for dark and sinister purposes without a serious possibility of a psychic backlash to anyone unwise enough to make such an attempt. Why is this so? Well, for the compelling reason that our, in our system, one's own reflection in a mirror is used as a start point for the conjuration of visible appearance in spirit evocation, a practice which the uninformed refer to as summoning demons. It's a practice which the uninformed refer to summoning demon. Now you don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize that trying to send a psychic component of your own personality, no matter how archetypal, off to hurt somebody else is analogous to lighting the fuse on a stick of dynamite and then wishing it would somehow fly out the window or sail all the way across town and blow up your enemy. Well, in this case, your enemy is yourself and you are a lot closer to home. <laughs> now, Crowley, as you all remember from Crowley's forward in the Goetia, Crowley laid this out. The, the spirits of the Goetia are portions. Crowley said portions of the human brain. He shouldn't have said that. He said portions, he should have said portions of the human mind. The brain is just the hardware, the mind is the software, so they're portions of the, but they are also larger, much, much larger. In this case, your enemy is yourself. Now, I'm not saying that these angel spirits elementals are entirely individual or personal. On the contrary, we all share in a universal population of archetypes, shadow fragments, and even superior and inferior non-human sentient beings. 
we access the greater universe beyond through the lesser universe within. We sit down for a minute and uh, this is on the as above so below hermetic principle. I would remind those poorly informed critics who jump to the conclusion that our ceremonial magic because of its dimly lighted setting, its exotic trappings, and its sonorous conjurations is therefore evil and sinister. It's no more evil and sinister than is Tibetan Tantric Buddhism, and certainly no more demonic than that venerable tradition. And if you've ever seen a black Malakali, you know what I'm talking about. And as in Tibetan Tantric practice, we master the rebellious spirits within ourselves on the path to spiritual enlightenment. The Tibetans have hundreds of gods, goddesses, and demons, and yet they are still Buddhists. Right? We have a pantheon of pre-biblical gods, goddesses, and demons, and yet we are still hermetic. Everything that gets into your brain affects your reality tunnel, your worldview, or your belief system, which I abbreviate BS. The, the, two, the, the, the three major things I've been trying to teach in all of my books is never believe fully in anybody else's BS. I don't care if it's Rajanish, the Pope, L. Ron Hubbard, Al Gore, George Bush, or I don't care who it is. Don't, don't, don't swallow all their belief system totally. Don't, don't accept all of their bullshit, They're all their BS. The second rule is like unto the first. Don't believe totally in your own BS. Which means that, as Bucky Fuller said, universe consists of non-simultaneously apprehended events. Non-simultaneously. Universe consists of non-simultaneously apprehended events, which means any belief system or reality tunnel you've got right now is going to have to be revised and updated as you continue to apprehend new events later in time, not simultaneously. This is the natural functioning of the human brain. It's the way children's brains perform before they're wrecked by the school system. It's the way the minds of all great scientists and artists work. But once you have a belief system, everything that comes in either gets ignored if it doesn't fit the belief system or it gets distorted enough so that it can fit into the belief system. You gotta be continually revising your map of the world or you'll lose more and more contact with reality. Anybody who has a belief system which covers the whole universe that would be the Roman Catholics, Orthodox Islam, the Scientologists, Psychop, the Marxists, the Objectivists, and most of the assholes you meet on the street. Uh, well, what, they, what has happened is their brain has stopped receiving new signals. Or to the extent that new signals do get in, they all have to be edited to fit into the belief system. If they don't fit the belief system, they get repressed one way or another, like the doctors can't hear the baby screaming while they circumcise them. I'm going to ask you not to judge me too quickly today. I know we all judge each other sometimes more than we should, but I'm about to give you some shocking information which you need to prove, information that goes far beyond what most of you have ever understood. Yet hopefully you will be willing to accept new truth if it is proved from your own Bible. Do you personally realize that most of the religious holidays which mainstream Christianity observe come straight out of paganism? Do you realize that God himself gave an entire series of holy days which Christ and the apostles did observe, which have been effectively trashed by mainstream Christianity? Do you know which days you should observe and why? You need to understand the difference between the pagan holidays of this world and God's true holy days that the Bible describes over and over again because it does make a big difference to God. Don't think it doesn't. It's a big thing with God. Otherwise, why would he begin to plague the nations of the earth if they did not keep the Feast of Tabernacles? It is a major thing with the great God, so please understand his holy days are important. For your own sake, please think about that. We're talking about the danger, the danger of casting a spell, of getting involved in the witchcraft, and even using that power of killing people. So, uh, Evangelist Anna, welcome again to another show of Women on the Move. We want to talk about, because of your involvement of being in witchcraft, you know, spiritualists and all this, let me call it all this mess, you know, the world of darkness, 
you were involved in casting spell on people. But before you answer the question, I just want to read what the Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 18. And we want to read from verse uh, 10 and 11. It said, there shall not be among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, one who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, one who interprets omens or a sorcerer, one who casts spell or a medium or a spiritualist or one who call up the dead. You were also involved, uh, Evangelist Alan, in casting spell to killing people. Tell us something about that. Well, uh, as uh, I explained in the first show uh, previously, um, I was first involved in what we call white magic. There is different magic huh? uh, that we call, uh, there is white, uh, Black green, magic, white magic, but the same green, devil. Mm -hmm. blue, pink, <laughs> red, and uh, black. Huh? Hidden camera techniques make available to us for the first time a true study of the morbid, black, and often erotic world of the witch. Witchcraft 70 takes you on a documentary journey in search of Satan and Satan's followers. They and their covens conduct their obscene rituals almost everywhere. We found voodoo in New Orleans, a black mass in London, the Raspagin bloodbath of Rio, a female initiation in Southampton, and at the end, Possibly the most shocking and bizarre ever, a hippie commune in California in a witchcraft ceremony that defies description. There are witches in today's society. You'll get to know some of them in Witchcraft 70. Okay. Um, this is the symbol that you can see inside here, but this was Hitler's logo. I don't know if you remember seeing pictures in World War II of that standard, and then the people had this on top of the standard. Well, when you look at a Led Zeppelin album, you will see that logo that Hitler had with the 666 inside, and you also see the New King James logo. Why would Led Zeppelin, the inventors of heavy metal rock group, the group that bought Aleister Crowley's mansion in England, why would they put so-called symbols for the Trinity? Well, obviously, they aren't symbols for the Trinity because the Bible says don't have symbols. They are symbols for the, the unholy Trinity. I, I don't know if you can see this, the thing that's spinning around up there, but that's the uh, Timothy, the Shinto symbol for the revolutions of the universe, so that's going on there. But I, I'm showing you this to tell you that Led Zeppelin has two things out there that are very interesting that will tie all this together for you. Led Zeppelin has an album called The Presence, capital P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E -E, okay? And in that album, you know, obviously they're exalting the worship of Satan and the worship of Lucifer. Um, and in all satanic and Luciferian literature, the devil is called The Presence, capital P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you. The devil and a whole host of demons, together with the human witches who were supposed to consort with them, were believed in by just about everybody in the first half of the 17th century and beyond. The witches were believed to associate with familiars, usually domestic animals, in whom the demons manifested themselves. The witches were usually women, and their familiars were often their cats. Oh, I come to warn you, the witchcraft is, is wicked in the sight of God's eyes. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins he have hidden his face from you, so he does not hear. If you're living in sin, and you pray to God, he turns his face from you. He sticks out the hand of repentance and says, talk to the hand like a woman who gives silent treatment to her husband. He sticks out the hand of repentance to you, 
I'm giving you silent treatment. You who perform wickedness. You who go in witches' shops. It's perverted. It's wicked. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Witchcraft is an abomination in the eyes of a holy and righteous and just God. It's the police. How are you doing, sir? Good, how are you? Good. Um, are you yelling or anything? I am. I'm lifting up my voice like a trumpet. Okay, well, you're scaring the, some of the neighbors, so you might want to just keep it down. You have the right to be here and voice right. your opinion, but uh, they can just kind of scare some of the neighbors, so just keep it down. All right. Okay? God bless you. I love you. God bless I'm you. praying for you guys' safety. Thank you. I All right. You, <clears throat> The Bible says, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. I don't want to see any of you perish. I love you people. Do you mind if I take your picture? It's America, man. What? It's America. You don't mind? It's America. How's your day going? Oh, it's going. Just trying to wake up people, man. Witchcraft is abomination in the eyes of God, you know, and uh, anybody that practices occult is in trouble with God. Oh, you're protesting against this place? Well, I'm trying to wake them up, anybody that goes in there. Oh. So, uh, do you practice occult? Do I? Yeah. Uh, no. Well, there's quite a, quite a hesitation there. I mean, I believe in it, but I'm not a practice like that. What do you mean you believe in the occult? Yeah. You believe in witchcraft? Yeah, I believe in the earth. You believe in witchcraft? I don't think it's witchcraft. You're in trouble, man. You're, yeah. You've been deceived by the God of this world. Well, you, you need to repent and turn from your wickedness before it is too late. I care for your soul, man. The Bible says unless you repent, you're going to perish. All right, man. God bless you, man. I used to be a witch, dude. Jesus Christ set me free. The revival of public interest in witchcraft is one of those curious features of life today. But it's very difficult to get at the truth of what it's all about. On one estimate, there are 30,000 people practicing in witchcraft in this country alone. A more conservative figure would be 8,000. But even so, it's enough to make you think. Are there really dangers involved? Or is it all just a delusion? And if it is just a delusion, why do so many really quite intelligent people half believe in it? Just what has been going on in this country since the last of the witchcraft laws was repealed in 1951? These um, suburban ladies and gentlemen who are acting out these fantasies are no doubt um, getting a good deal of healthy exercise, but I don't think they've got anything at all to do with the witches of the 16th and 17th century folk that's under witchcraft and don't even know it but I'm here to tell you folks if you listen to me over radio and the devil's been fixing you now it's worse when you've dubbed in it when you've been dubbing in witchcraft when you're dubbing in the powers of darkness and all bewitched bothered and bewildered and messed up and then looking wonder why folks are doing you that way uh-uh but I'm speaking of you that don't have nothing to do with that mess but somebody is sending forces. Somebody is sending power. Somebody is sending demonic forces in your direction, trying to confuse you, trying to make you upset, keeping you from sleeping, disturbing you. God told me to tell you, there's power in the name of Jesus. His name can break the powers of witchcraft, voodooism, witch doctor, warlocks, soothsayers, a cult. His power can break it and curse the forces of the enemy. And I'm here to tell you, don't be afraid. Let him sprinkle the goofy dust. Let him get John the Conqueror. Let them go and get a, a man. Talking about I went to Louisiana and I done picked up, I done picked up 
thank God some weeds. I done picked up a leaf. I done picked up a branch. Honey, you can go to Louisiana and pick up a tree and come back here. You can't do a thing with me. Greater he that is in me. I curse your power. You witch. You witch. I curse your power. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I bind you. I'm not asking you. I'm commanding you. Hold your peace. Shut up. Get out of here. In Jesus' name. I told you I ain't going crazy. I tell you right now, I was disappointed bad. Uh, but I tell you right there, as as sorry as you can get, the Bible's again it, God's again it, I'm again it, and if you've got any sense, you're again it. I had a way, I figured a way out, a way to get rid of all the lesbians and queers, but I couldn't get it past the Congress. <laughs> Build a great, big, large fence, hundred. 50 or 100 mile long, put all the lesbians in there, fly over and drop some food. Do the same thing with the queers and the homosexuals and have that fence electrified till they can't get out. Feed them and, and you know what? In a few years, they'll die out. Do you know why they can't reproduce? If a man ever has a young and praise God, he'll be the first one. All of these. You can just well to amen. I'm going to preach the hell out of all of us. Hey, I, I tell you right now, somebody said, who are you going to vote for? I ain't going to vote for a baby killer and a homosexual lover. Amen. You said, did you mean to say that? You better believe I did. God have mercy. It makes me puking sick to think about. I don't even know whether you ought to say this in the pulpit or not. Could you imagine kissing some man? My God, I love you, fella. I really believe that the pagans and the abortionists and the feminists and the gays and the lesbians who are actively trying to make that an alternative lifestyle, the ACLU, People for the American Way, all of them who tried to secularize America, I point the thing in their face and say, you helped this happen. Just as I loved seeing my children's faces brighten up when I surprised them, God loves bringing a smile to your face. It gives him great joy when he hears you say, wow, God, you are awesome. You amaze me with your goodness. We're in a moral free fall when your children can be taught witchcraft by Harry Potter, that Heather has two mummies. You can substitute Christmas for a midwinter holiday. Call it anything you want to, but don't call it Christmas. Kick God out of the Christmas event. You can let your daughter go to school and she can get an abortion without your permission or without your knowledge, but she cannot get an aspirin without your knowledge. Something is dreadfully wrong when you as the parent cannot control the destiny of your own child. America has turned its back on the God of the Bible and it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to stand up and speak up and say we have a right to the destiny of our own children. For those who refuse to accept God's rules and God's way, God remains the God of judgment. But for those who love God and live a righteous life, God is the God of forgiveness and the God of salvation. People refusing to observe God, passing laws completely contrary to God's laws, or else celebrating pagan, unholy holidays. Uh, God strikes these down. If Masons are depending upon the Lodge to save them, then their trust is as misplaced as those who depend upon church membership rather than on Christ. One might just as well depend on belonging to the Kiwanis or Rotary Club if good works would save us. I myself have talked to young people 
And they've told me, and they very, very seriously believe it, and there was nothing that I could say to make them disbelieve it, that they are possessed by a witch, and that she controls them, she controls their thinking and their actions, and there's nothing that this person can do about it. An example of one of the devil's mockeries would be homosexuality, which is a twisted and vile abomination to mock what God created between Adam and Eve. Beware of the devil's schemes and plots to turn you away from the faith. The Bible teaches to keep the marriage bed pure, <laughs> okay? We have testimonies of people who have had evil anointing and gifts that were given to them by demonic influence actually removed from them as we prayed over them. Paul the Apostle, who was led by the Holy Spirit to cast out the spirit of divination out of that woman so she would no longer have the gift of fortune telling. Okay, so this is utter blasphemy, people. Utter blasphemy. Ridiculous. According to scripture, Jesus is the one and only way to reconciliation with God. So what about the tribes of peoples of South America, Australia, and Africa who died and never had a chance to hear the gospel? Are they condemned? Well, God doesn't condemn anyone for what they absolutely do not know, okay? He deals with them, you might say, on a little different level. Although salvation comes solely through Jesus Christ. When Benny Hinn's show moves on, he doesn't get to see the sadness of the families left in his wake. Laura Twilley's daughters write to their mother every week, still trying to understand how she could die after her miracle. I curse that man who dares to speak a word against this ministry. Jesus Christ. Lady, let me see this. This here belonged to a witch one time. The Lord just said it to me. We be careful what you put on your body. You see this right here? You see this right, right here? That is a satanic sign, whether you know it or not, right here. This is a, sim this is a satanic symbol. The Bible in, in, in Joshua 7 and 8, God said to Israel, he said, if you touch what is cursed, you'll, you'll, you'll be cursed. The Italian reports, without attribution, say the real reason Benedict resigned was because the three investigating cardinals uncovered far more salacious scandals. The Vatican won't even deign to comment. Church officials have also tried to steer the conversation away from the sexual abuse scandal. Today in Los Angeles, Cardinal Roger Mahoney had to testify under oath about allegations he actively concealed the crimes of pedophile priests. One of them, Father Nicholas Aguilar Rivera, was accused of molesting 26 boys in 1987. He fled to Mexico after Mahoney's top aide warned him the police would investigate. The idea that Cardinal Mahoney should help choose the next pope is an outrage, say the people who were sexually abused by priests in Los Angeles. According to God's word, the Antichrist is not a military or political leader. Rather, the Antichrist will lead a religion as the head of a great false church. These files are the strongest evidence yet that former Archbishop, now retired Cardinal Roger Mahoney, and his chief aide, Monsignor Thomas Curry, plotted to conceal the abuse from police. In one correspondence in 1988, Curry wrote, The whole issue of our records is a very sensitive one, and I'm reluctant to give any list to the police. Archbishop Mahoney's handwritten response, We cannot give such a list for no cause whatsoever. Cardinal Mahoney tweeted his excitement about heading to Rome today, but no mention of the deposition. He also blogged this week about feeling like a scapegoat, as he put it, suffering painful and public humiliation, just like Jesus. 